Chapter 3 India's Defense System In the last chapter, we studied the features of India's foreign policy. In this chapter, we shall study India's defense system. When there are conflicts between nations, the territorial integrity and sovereignty of these nations is threatened. Sometimes the conflicts between nations are not resolved peacefully. They may even lead to a war. Therefore, it becomes very important to protect the unity and sovereignty, even the very existence of one's country. For this purpose, every nation has to maintain well-equipped armed forces. The paramilitary forces also have to be kept ready to complement the armed forces. It is imperative that the machinery that takes care of the country's defense must be modern and up-to-date. These measures constitute the national defense. The protection of a country is the responsibility of its government and it is the responsibility of the citizens to participate in it. If the defense system of a country is strong, it provides a conducive atmosphere for the development of the country. The Nature of India's Defense System The Indian defense system includes the armed forces and other organizations related to defense. The Indian military consists of the army, navy and air force. The headquarters of each of these three forces are in New Delhi. The President of India is the head of the Indian Armed Forces. He or she is the Commander-in-Chief of all the three forces, namely the Army, the Navy and the Air Force. The Prime Minister decides the defense policy in consultation with the Cabinet. Since defense as a subject falls in the Union list, the Union Government has the authority to take decisions regarding security issues. The Ministry of Defense of the Union Government carries out all functions relating to the security of the nation. The head of this ministry is known as the Defense Minister. The Political Affairs Committee, Committee on National Security and the National Security Council are three bodies that help the government in taking decisions about defense. Army The main function of the army is to protect the land borders of India. The army consists of the infantry, artillery, armored corps, etc. The chief of army staff is known as the general. Navy India has a coastline of about 7,517 kilometers. The responsibility of protecting these oceanic borders lies with Indian Navy. The chief of naval staff is known as the Admiral. Air Force The Air Force has the responsibility of protecting India's airspace. The chief of air staff is known as the Air Chief Marshal. The chiefs of the three forces are appointed by the President. Training Institutes In order to strengthen and reinforce India's defense system, officers and soldiers are given training. This training helps to increase their level of confidence and efficiency. This training helps them to adopt defense-related skills. Training helps to nurture an attitude of commitment, patriotism and team spirit. Now, many opportunities are available for women too in the Indian Defense Services. There are several training institutes which train officers and soldiers. Some of the important training institutes are the National Defense Academy at Pune, Indian Military Academy at Dehradun, and the National Defense College at Delhi. Paramilitary Forces The forces which help in maintaining internal security, protecting the coastline, and assisting the army are known as paramilitary forces. These include the Border Security Force, BSF, Coast Guard, Central Reserve Police Force, CRPF, Rapid Action Force, RAF, etc. The responsibility of the security of important places like railway stations, oil fields and refineries, water reservoirs, lies with the paramilitary forces. They also participate in the management of natural or man-made disasters. During peacetime, 
the paramilitary forces also have the responsibility of protecting the international borders. The border security force has to create a feeling of security among citizens in the border areas, prevent smuggling and patrol the borders. The Coast Guard has been set up to protect the Indian coasts. It carries out various tasks like providing security to the fishing activity within the Indian maritime borders, preventing smuggling on the sea routes, etc. The Central Reserve Police Force helps the administration in different states in maintaining law and order. Whenever there is a threat to the nation due to bomb blasts, strikes, etc., the Rapid Action Force quickly moves in and brings normalcy to the lives of the people. The National Cadet Corps has been instituted to imbibe discipline and motivation for military training among the students in the country. Boys and girls from schools and colleges can join the NCC. Home Guards The Home Guards organization was raised in the pre-independence period. Citizens can join the Home Guards to assist in the defense of the nation. Any person in the age group of 18 to 50 years can join the Home Guards. The Home Guards have to execute several tasks. They join hands with the police in maintaining public security, providing essential services like supply of milk and water during riots or strikes, regulating traffic, helping people during natural calamities like earthquakes, floods, etc. Citizens and Defense Air raids and missile attacks during wars can devastate entire cities. Transport routes, bridges and dams are destroyed. As a result, civic life is disrupted. At such times, Citizens should not panic. In fact, they should not let such situations affect their morale because their morale and cooperation have a direct bearing on the might of the armed forces. Citizens can play a great role in national defense by supporting the forces. National security is our prime duty. Citizens can shoulder a great responsibility during emergencies if they have some training in civil defense and first aid. Citizens must have elementary information about what precautionary measures are needed during times of emergency. In such situations, malpractices like black marketing, holding and smuggling gain strength. There are instances of vandalism and thefts. Citizens must firmly stand up to them at such times. If they cooperate in this way, the security of the country can remain intact. The security of the nation is dependent on the courage and strength of the armed forces and the cooperation and support of the citizens. Citizens must always bear this in mind. The Challenges Before India's Security In the post-independence period, external forces tried to threaten India's security. There were instances of war between India and Pakistan in 1947-48 1965, 1971, and 1998. In 1962, China had attacked India. Even today, there are many disputes between India and Pakistan. For example, the Kashmir issue, water sharing dispute, the problem of infiltration, etc. The border dispute with China is a challenge to India's security. In spite of all this, India has always taken the lead in resolving her disputes with the neighboring countries through peaceful means. Today, the biggest challenge before India's security is terrorism and our country has been trying to wipe out terrorism. India has been supporting the efforts at the international level to root out terrorism. There is linguistic, religious and regional diversity in India but we have preserved our unity within this diversity. We must protect and nurture this unity. As a citizen, it is our duty to ensure that while protecting our religious and regional identity, there will be no threat to the unity and integrity of the country.